Hey, um, my name is Alan, product marketing for QCT. There's actually more people than I expected, so I'm a little bit nervous right now. <laughs> but hey, um, we got some giveaway right there, just in case you, since you stopped by, right? Um, a little bit of giveaway, so like after we finish the conversation, like welcome to actually to pick it up, okay? So yeah, um, like let me get, kind of get started. Like today, I want to talk about what QCT has been doing and and what have we done before, and then what we're looking forward to to continue going with the OCP community, right? So this is a little bit history about what we have been done. Um, little as you might have known, we actually been working with Facebook uh, since 2009 which is a long time ago before actually OCP community actually were funded. So um, at the very beginning, we were working on some small project called Wildcat and then started with the windmill. I, I think you guys will probably know that pretty well. And then we see um, a broader market that was outside of just Facebook usage model. Uh, for instance, enterprise, for instance, telco and the HPC market, right? So we start um, investing a lot of more money uh, into our engineer and um, perspective and then creating a little bit more different, um, different, uh, different application usage model and systems that's feeding for different things. So um, about 2013, that's how QCT as a brand kind of started. So we introduced our first, what we call the enterprise cloud um, solutions, right? We used the OCP 21-inch uh, phone factor, but give it a little bit of spin um, on the enclosure and provide like, for instance, like um, rate rate support for your drives. Obviously, you guys know like Facebook does not care about rate that much, right? <laughs> and then we start creating like for, for instance, the high density micro servers, and we're working with um, uh, the community with the 19 inch OCP product and the Declassity and the Roadrunner, uh, which is the Intel platform and the AMD platform, right? And then um, we also involved with the, what we call the Microsoft WCS, and we're all, also the manufacturing for that and the design house for that. And then continue going forward. If you're looking for beyond 2015 and forward, we are going to continue to implement it like uh, with Intel, with the REC scale architecture on the software stack, implement it into the open REC standard. So we're very heavily invested in the community, and hopefully you guys will see that uh, when you're visiting our booth, right? So let me talk about um, other stuff outside of um, like OCPs, right? There's obviously uh, what we involved with the open REC. Um, we call it Reco X as one of the, our product lines. And we also involved with the Reco M, which is the WCS OCS that Microsoft was developing and contributed to the c community. And we were also involved in the China Scobio projects, right? It's like a derivative of what Facebook was doing here today. And uh, in the OCP community, they have uh, Tencent, Baidu, and Alibaba was doing the Scobio project. It's an open standard, so um, we were also involved in that. So um, first product I want to talk about is actually Big Sur, right? Uh, Big Sur has been uh, very popular in the recent like um, conversation that we have with our customers um, for for the for the reason like deep learning has been picking up a lot of uh, momentum in the industry. So we have been co-working with um, Facebook uh, very closely on this one. Um, this is the first GPU project that's ready for open rec, and we believe that HPC market can also take benefit of this, right? And then we also have some. Um, customers who is looking for this for different applications and different usage model. So if you're interested in that, we will, you will have that in the booth. And also, um, we have something called Leper, uh, Leper Cave, and it's actually an OpenRack V2 standard product. And um, as you know, OpenRack V2 has become a new standard. 1.2 or OpenRack V2 has become a new standard with a single boss bar. So we're going to have a full line of products that's going to be available um, for, for market. And then you guys will enjoy the latest and the greatest product that from, from, from that perspective. And also, um, this is what we call the Reco X, um, Yosemite Valley. And it's a micro, uh, Intel um, a Xeon D microprocessor. And this is a very high dense density product. And in the 2 OU um, space, we actually have uh, 12 uh, Xeon D processor. And there's a certain application, like uh, very specific workloads that you can use, and you can enjoy the benefit of having that kind of density in a very, um, very high density rack. So, okay, so move away from what I showed you previously. The three products is actually what Facebook is using today, right? 
But just like I said earlier, we actually invested uh, our engineer efforts into products that's outside the Facebook scope. For instance, we'll have something called the Labor Snow and the Labor Cave. Uh, it's a product that's a 2U4 no. It's very conventional to what you used to in terms of the 2U4 no density that in the high density, um, for instance, multi no servers, right? And we have a, a little bit different flavors. Uh, I wish I have pointed too, but um, in the middle portion right here, uh, similar to what Penguin was doing earlier, uh, in the more middle portion right here, we actually have a couple different flavors. Like the, the chassis was split into three even uh, sections. So the motherboard was also one, 177 millimeter. And the middle portion right here, we have uh, either one is embedded switch that you can aggregate all the traffic for the four nodes into that particular section. Or we have a, a storage tray that can hold up to 32 small form factor drives that will be available to all the four nodes for, for your use. So you can imagine each node will get actually eight drives, small form factor drives that's available. So that's plenty of storage for you to actually use in a very compact space, right? And the next one, we also have something what we call the Nuxville. It's a storage product, obviously. So uh, flavor of this is um, it's, a, it's a 2OU, obviously, and then it has we have one flavor with a 28 drive, or the other flavor with a 38 drive, a 30 drive, not 38. But um, we also could use it as a J bar, or we could use as a as some sort of control node with a with a J bar. So we have a Broadwell D that could be available right here inside a uh, inside a chassis. So you can control the entire thing through a networking, just plug in the network to the DOR, and everything will work, right? So it's a lot of innovation on this side. So yeah, um, interesting enough, like um, yesterday was in the keynote, I think Jason Taylor was talking about the EIA 19 inch product stuff, right? So um, we've been working with Facebook also um, bringing the Leopard uh, motherboard into a 19 inch form factor. So this is what we have in Carmel. Uh, it's a 19 inch form factor. Uh, the chassis is already in mass production. Uh, it's a very proven, um, chassis that we actually were able to actually install the labor motherboard in this, right? We have a 2U4 no uh, SKU that's available to, uh, and also a 2U2 no uh, SKU that's also available. So check out our booth if you are interested in this kind of product and then something interesting to you. So I think this is the last one. <laughs> last one is called Montreal. And this is uh, uh, basically we take the Mono Lake uh, micro server board and install it into a 19 inch form factor as well. So in a 2U setup, 2RU setup, you actually can enjoy a Molo Lake micro server board inside it. So, and this could be something, and I, I'll, I'll love to have you guys come over and talk to us and kind of start brainstorming and picking your brand about what other things we can do with all this uh, innovation and motherboards like from Facebook community, open, open OCP community, right? So um, there's other industry leading uh, architecture at the QCP IO website. So if you guys have time, um, I feel I'm hoping you can actually enjoy it. Um, go visiting our website and then find out more products and more stuff that that's not showing right here today. Obviously, the, the show floor was a little bit, you know, not, not as big. So there's a couple workshops if you want to more more details about the product I just showed you earlier. And there will be workshops that's available for you guys to actually to see. And there's one at 10 o'clock right after right after this one. And then there was also a big serve at 10:30, right? And with that all being said, uh, before you go pick up the the gift, we're gonna give it to you. I would love to introduce one of the very important partner that we have, um, Hao Wu, who is the vice president and head of the software um, solution for Ericsson. He's been working with us very closely, and let me hover, hand it over to Howard. All right, thank you. Thank you, Alan, for the intro. Uh, hi, everyone, my name is Howard. Uh, two weeks ago in uh, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Ericsson uh, announced two things. Uh, one is a strategic partnership with QCT. The other one is that we joined uh, OCP as a platinum member. And I've been getting a lot of questions, so I figured I'd take a couple minutes and just sort of explain everything uh, uh, right here. So, uh, just a quick slide on who Ericsson is. No, we don't make cell phones anymore. Um, we are 
Uh, we are one of, the, one of the companies that's built really the world's largest distributed infrastructure. Now that infrastructure does what we call mobile networks. Um, globally, we have about 120,000 employees. We're in about 187 countries, uh, and we do all of these uh, below. So we are you know, doing about $35 billion uh, in revenue a year. But other than who Ericsson is, uh, I think a lot of the questions I got was, why does Ericsson want to be part of OCP, and what are you actually contributing to the project? So I'll try to answer those in the next couple minutes. Um, so why does Ericsson want to join OCP? I think our, our journey in the data center space is very similar probably to Facebook that most of us realize. Uh, globally, we have about over 900 sites with some kind of hardware server infrastructure in them. And so in the, over the last two years, we've been on this internal transformation journey where we're trying to consolidate those into three global data centers that we run out of all of our R&D and test requirements out of. Uh, now, as we started that journey about two years ago, we started thinking, what would the next generation software-defined data center look like? Now, in a lot of those conversations, we looked at sort of the market solutions out there, and we couldn't really find what we wanted. So we started working with Intel on Intel's rack scale architecture. Uh, and over the last two years, of course, last year, we announced our product availability at Barcelona. Um, and it's been, it, it's been a very interesting space to see us really dominating those type of conversations uh, with our competition. And so even coming to OCP is really we're trying to envision a world where we take a lot of the learnings we do from the web companies and the cloud companies, and we really combine with what we've learned uh, with our telco customers over the last 140 years. A uh, very good case in point is just like Google announced that they joined OCP yesterday, one of the things that they wanted to do was 48 volt power. Uh, that is pretty much a standard in most of the telecom today. So the, those are the things that we really like and we would really like to drive and be part of the community and the conversation. So what will we actually contribute with? Um, I would say our focus is probably on three sides. So number one, even when we developed our product, our server product, uh, together with Intel on Waxco architecture, we dimensioned the entire back of the network to be fully optical. Because in a fully disaggregated world, one of the problems we see in our, in our own data centers is how do you scale outside the rack? And if this year is the year everybody goes 100 gig inside your data center, how do you have a single core here managing disk workload that's five racks away? So we really wanted to see the only way to solve those is really through an optical backplane. Um, so that is definitely one side. We want to work with the community and OCP and setting those standards. The other thing we really see that's a little bit missing uh, is on the software management layer. So how do we actually use, develop, and drive those software standards? So that's really the secret sauce behind software defined. Um, so we really want to be a part of those conversations. And the third part is really on the mechanical chassis design, how we take our 140 years of experience in developing what we call, you know, it, with a globally huge distributed infrastructure and the reliability that we've come to really know and build. And we really like to drive those commonalities inside the community together. And that's all I have. So thanks for coming. Thank you very much. All the gifts are right there. <laughs>